And that's not condemning or throwing stones at nobody. Right. We all have a flaws in our character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all have something we're struggling with, yeah. but that don't make us a fool. Yeah. Some parts of our knowledge have not been fully comprehended. God is still what? Shaping all of us. Yes. We all have a little struggle, a little battle we go through. But that battle does not belong to you. It belongs to the God that made you. In the book of uh, 2 Chronicles 17 and 21 says, And in this battle we need not to fight, for this battle does not belong to you. And you're supposed to give that battle to the Lord. Sometimes we try to fight battles ourselves, and we end up losing. Yes. But what about the one that you ask to be your Savior and your Lord? He's the one that fights your battles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going back to 10th century and uh, century 5 BC. Where is this written? In Jerusalem. The Old Testament. What we call the Old Testament, we call that, theologians call that the Torah. But which prophets, priests, and kings, the Spirit of God would deal upon them and they would write up under the anointing. He would give them the power, the authority to write, like this psalmist here, King David, prophet, priest, and king. He had three authorities in him. But his heart was still full of iniquity because he wanted somebody else's wife. Mm -hmm. I told y'all that last week. 1991, somebody wrote a song, Holy B. Yeah. Other person's property. You had a business on somebody else's property. Yes. That's not your wife. Yes. I told you that's the wrong type of property you want. No, I can see if you wanted a home or a car, <laughs> but you want somebody else's wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong type of thing you want. Yes, so he, she had his husband put out on the front line by a Hittite, who was a warrior and a fighter. Mm -hmm. Adam slaughtered, killed, because that's what he wanted. Sometimes our own intuitions, our own desires get in the way of serving a holy God. Yes. And it makes us look like what? A fool. Yes. Yeah. But guess what? Even in his authority, God already knew what was in his heart. Yeah. Just like you know what's in our heart sometimes. Amen. Every day you ain't walk, uh, waking up to me, well, I feel saved today. No, you don't. Amen. Some days you don't feel saved. Yes. Some days you don't feel like praying. Some days you don't feel like reading your Bible. Some days you don't feel like talking because you feel like a fool. That's your flesh. But only God knows what's in the heart. I heard a woman say years ago, she said, only God can do a cut in our chest and lay us down on the spiritual gurney and see what's really in our heart. And said, it was, wouldn't surprise you. He's never surprised. Amen. The deep, dark secrets, the secret plots, the things you desire, Everything that's in your heart is not always of God. Amen. Some things that you picked up through the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only God can do surgery on you, which we call the porcelain skin of the heart. That means to remove a layer. And only God can create us what? A clean heart. She just yeah. read it. And he did in Psalms 51. He asked God to create in him what? A clean heart. And renew a right spirit within him. But he asked God what? Don't cast me away from your presence. One thing you don't want God to do is take his spirit from you. His own spirit. When you do that, it's just like your Ichabod. That means God is not being glorified in you. That means he has departed. A woman of God told me years ago, she said, God will pack his bags and leave you. But the Bible also says God is married to what? The backsliders. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yes. yes. But in his heart was full of foolishness. So in this psalm, he's dealing with inter, inner emotions to who? God in his feelings. What he's struggling with because he failed. He fell for grace. He lost his position. But only God can restore a man or a woman of God. People will hold that against you. Amen. People will hold you in bondage. Yes, mm -hmm. People will cause you to stress, not want to be bothered. But God, in his infinite wisdom, will restore you. Only God can restore a man. Only God can heal a man. Amen. Only God can renew a man or a woman of God. No matter what your struggles is, you take that to God. I tell people this all the time. Stop taking all your unclean laundry to carnal people. Sometimes we reveal too much to people, but we never tell it to God. But he also hears every conversation, whether it be a clean one, idle, whether it be of yourself. God knows what's in your heart. He knows who's in you. But that don't mean you keep rehearsing and practicing that sin. Right. You release it, 
and you give it to him. Stop giving your business to people. He's doing spiritual psalms and hymns, which is a worship. Because in this season, he's feeling like a dead weight. He feels like God has departed from him. He, because he made that mistake and did that sin, he felt that God had left him. Have you ever walked in a season where it felt like God was nowhere near you? You prayed and you got no answers. One bishop said he prayed so and said it felt like the prayer went up through the ceiling and came back down. I said, no, no, no. He said, yes. He said, a dry season. We call that a spiritual dry season. Where it felt like you were in the wilderness with no sun, no water. The Bible says he, he's a lily in the valley, the bright and morning star. Where it feels like you're just left alone. And God is nowhere near you. But you always have to remember this. God has angels in camp around about you. We don't worship them. We don't praise them. But we thank God for the angels. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In this dry season, sometimes you feel foolish. You feel like God has stuff to us. And it says here, a fool is a silly or stupid person. A person who lacks judgment or sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No spiritual sense. No knowledge, no understanding. He, do, he does things out of his own natural self. Mm -hmm. And we have to be so careful. Of dominant, worthy of all causing dis, uh, quiet or disturbance or hatred. Mm -hmm. Causing distra uh, distractions. That means his works in God means it doesn't mean any good. He's doing it with the wrong type of spirit. Yes, the psalmist is in the wilderness. A fool has said in his heart that there is no God. I've had two tell me they do not believe in God. So that means you're an atheist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pat Robinson went on a mission from the man from the 700 Club. And he went to, a, to pray for a man who was full of riches. And they called and requested that he come to their house. He went, he took somebody with you. Whenever you want to sign for the Lord, you never go by yourself. You take somebody with you. But you have to be so very careful yes. to go even pray for certain people in their homes. You have to be very, very careful. I tell people that all the time. Amen. And he went to go pray for the man, and they talked for about an hour. He said, now, will you accept Jesus Christ? He said, no. And the man was sick and dying. Pat Robinson was going down the staircase. And he said, while he was going down the stairs, one of the long staircases, he said he could hear chains coming up. Rattling black chains and looked like black shadows, not to scare anybody. Because the man was very bitter. He was rich, but he wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. So he said, while he was hearing those chains, he said, while he was shutting the door, he could hear the man screaming, No! And said, so with an hour later, he got a phone call that the man died. But that's acting just like a fool. You denied Christ, you didn't want him, but you wanted those riches. So he died in his sins. He thought his riches can get him in. Your riches cannot get you into heaven. I don't care what you have. Amen. When you leave here, you ain't going to have a casket for a, a fur coat, a dog, yeah. your utensils, your car, yeah. it's just your money. They ain't, you can stuff on the side if you want to, but somebody going to take it out anyway. Amen. Your body just going to be laying here. Yes, One funeral, somebody told me their grandmother was rich. She had on a diamond ring. She was married. Her husband had died first. She had on a diamond ring, a white dress, beautiful white dress, hair done up. She was always a very glamorous Christian. But she didn't forget her God. She knew who God was. She accepted him as his personal, her personal savior. And they put away beautifully in a silver casket. She had on a, a gold chain cross. Very glamorous. Right? You know how little woman like the nails done. <laughs> the nails done. Grandma was hooked, you know. But grandma was very beautiful in the casket. <laughs> they looked over there, the, the one that did her body said she looked nice. She looked like she was at peace. You can tell those who fought death. And you oh, can yeah. tell those who look like they had peace. Yeah, she, she like she was asleep. Yeah. Now he was the first one to view the body and opened it up, the casket, and let the family march in. He said when the service was over, he happened to look over to her hand and that rock was gone. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Stole the grandma's ring off her face and that, that right there got me. That's a fool. 
Yeah. That's a fool. I've been scared. Yeah. Greed. You want to find out how your family really think of you? That one of you pass away. Amen. And you're going to see how really people really act. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They went to the burial and they were spitting at each other while he was doing the closing remarks. Uh -huh. One put one in the ground and one took the car off the lot and one tried to run over, one over and they started fighting. He told the family, I never do another funeral for none of them. And she left the wheel. They got their money. But after that, one of them dropped dead. So you got to be careful. Are you acting like a saint or are you acting like a fool? You got to be careful. got to be so careful. We do works of iniquity. I want, Sister Felicia, I want you to turn to the, um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. And I'm, I'll let you know when to read it. Let me read this verse down here. It says here, the fool is a person is one who lives as if there is no God. Fools reveal their rebellious sin against God in two ways. They reject God's revelation, or they do not believe that the Bible says what it says about God. They scorn the moral principles of God's word, and they rely on their own ideas, determined, determined right by their own wrong. They believe wrong is right and right is wrong. Amen? Amen? They do not speak of God, nor do they call God in prayer for this presence and or help. They're more self-denial, self-sufficient. I said Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 2 and 3, and that's in the New Testament. Okay. New right. Testament. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Okay. Now check. Oh, okay. And the psalmist describes the depravity of the wicked and teaches that some human race, by nature, separate from God. Paul quotes the first three verses of this psalm to support the truth that all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Romans chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. You may read it. Okay. Within the times past ye walked according to the course of this world, mm -hmm. according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. New life in Christ, that's the end of that text. <coughs> but we've all been born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We've all walked in our flesh and desires of the flesh. That's as to say, you're doing your own thing, yeah. according to your own rules and your own lane. But when you accept Christ, he removes all those sins, iniquities, even those deep secrets that we carry. Only God's Holy Spirit can wash you clean. It's only God's presence that can keep you and make you whole. That's why you repent daily. Amen. When you wake up, you're supposed to be hit before you're supposed to be in prayer automatically. Yes. When you go to bed at night, you're supposed to be in prayer. And that's God to forgive you all your sins. Now there are times when people do come test your character. Yes. People will come and test you and see where you are. But every test is not from God. Every test is not from God. Sometimes it's people in their flesh. Yes. To test you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And to see where you are just to get on your nerves. Right. And jack up your character. Right. And this one thing I learned, you can't put down your religion to tell people off. Mm -hmm. Even though even though I'm in a high position as pastor sometimes they are trying to <laughs> trying to they keep trying to tell them I'm from the project. They don't Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend, no. Yes. <laughs> then I tell my brother who, who liked the fight, the oldest one. And I had to tell him that we didn't do that. But what am I telling you? We're not acting like fools, but we're still human. Amen. And God is still working on all of us. Well, I'm going to put my, down my religion to let you have it. I've had people, I have one man, man tell me that I was an airhead. 
in church. <laughs> and a year later, he was stricken with cancer. And I just looked at him. <laughs> but hey, really? This, he told me who he was. Arrogance. Yes. But no God. God is not arrogant. He's humble. Amen. And he asked me, was there a word from the Lord? And I wouldn't go pray for him. I kid you not. Struggle with God would not speak to me about that man. Would not give me an answer. And a woman evangelist went up to the hospital and prayed for him and God healed him. See, that, was not my, that wasn't my assignment. That was hers. Amen. Just because the door opened don't mean it's from God. Amen. And God healed him. He's still living today. God bless, God bless his soul. And I pray that he stay humble. Amen. Just because you have an authority wrapped over you, don't mean you become arrogant. Amen. Or pious or prideful. That's never been my character. Amen. People start talking crazy and just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won't even say that. Just, just look at it. I've seen people well, I was at two portals. I'm gonna use this last scripture. And I was going to see my dentist, get my teeth done. I know some of us don't like to do this. That little silver stain, the scrape of the dish. You have to do that. Really, really be careful with that. Right. So I went and got the teeth cleaned, but I was going to Tim Hortons to give you some apple juice. But this, and this uh, light skinned girl jumped in front of me and said, I'm getting up here first. And the woman said, Just let her have it. I'm getting that one. And the man behind her said, That's right, she's a diva. Something like that he said. <laughs> I just look. I ain't say nothing. Don't say, don't say nothing. We got on the same bus, and I just kept looking at him. I was just, <laughs> Ooh, I was burning. Oh, I said, oh, what is that? He said, I'm just letting you know I'm still working. <laughs> <laughs> just, God would not let me say anything to her. I was burning up in that seat. I said, God, come on, really? <laughs> You're working on you, you can't let somebody take your joy mm -hmm. and your yeah. strength and your energy. Now, if that was somebody that was from the projects that was not saved, right. they would have whooped her from the front yeah. to the back. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who yeah. are all the college. Yeah. See, God knows, you know, we can only act a certain way. Yeah. And Christianity is not an act, it's real. Yeah, amen. See, God was testing my character. That he let me know, right? I'm not finished with you. Now, look how you're looking at her. <laughs> yes, I said. We're going to go back to um, Romans chapter number 10. Yeah, we left us off 39. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Romans chapter number 3, verses 10 to 12. We're still talking about a fool. Sometimes we act foolish as Christians. And then later on, we repent and ask God to forgive us. Because he's still checking what? Our attitudes. Mm. Our attitudes. Mm -hmm. God is working on all of us. None of us exempt. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter number 3, verses 10, 11, and 12. Now read it out loud. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that is under, that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. And verse 4 says, and there are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good. No, not one. Romans chapter number 3, verses 10, 11, and 12. Thank you. So we've all been found guilty. But we still carry the love of God. Amen. And every day he's poured into us. He put, he's, first of all, let me, let me correct this with wisdom. I don't care if you're speaking, speaking 52 times. Amen. God is looking at your character. Amen. Amen. I don't care if you're speaking tongues with interpretation with six members. God looking at that character. Yes. Are you walking in God's love? Amen. Or are you walking in your flesh? Amen. He's checking us from the time we get up to the time we lay down. I heard Dr. Joyce Meyer say something years ago. She said she went off on somebody so bad. She said she went to bed that night. And she thought she was going to get a good night's sleep. And 
and the Lord checked her right there in the mirror. Her husband was knocked out, but he was checking her. He said, I'm going to need you to not tell people off. I mean, this is clear. Don't say that to people. Your character is off. I'm going to raise you up and take you before the country. This is before people knew who Joyce Myers was. But I like her. Very simple teacher. Very simple. She puts her life into the word. And she said, he told her to say, don't do that again. He said, because if you do this next time, I'm going to shut you down. God will shut you down. Always remember this. If he ain't using you, excuse my grammar, he will use somebody else that sounds just like you. Because sometimes we can be foolish as Christians. We've got to be so careful how we carry ourselves. Even though people like to pick our nerves. But, yeah. And I got a phone call this morning. They want to start talking all out and stuff. Man, could you make them leave? <laughs> they can go. <laughs> Every time somebody calls you, you got to pick up the phone. Show your hand. Mm-hmm. And it says here, faith as the means of salvation. Verse 23 says, that's the same chapter, Romans 3, but verse 23. And this is to help all of us, not one of us, all of us. Amen. The word will find you out. Amen. Amen. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Mm-hmm. We all fall short. Yeah. And how many know you feel bad after you didn't fell short? Yes. Feel bad because you really didn't mean it, but they just it was just the wrong timing. Mm-hmm. Only God knows the heart of man. Yeah. We still dealing with the topic, the fool's faith. But you need God in this earth. Yes, Lord. You're gonna need God every day of your life. But when you accept him, he stays there. God does not leave us. We leave him. Amen. We walk away from him. Yeah. I heard people say they couldn't take the Lord. The warfare as a Christian is very high. I've seen people walk away from God and turn different colors. I've seen a man turn darker than what he was. My friend said, you know what that is. I said, yeah, those are demons. They went to pray for him and they said, that man, now I'm going to be too bright. They said, that man regurgitated from the front door all the way to that chair right there. And a woman, a woman pastor named Pastor Alberta Robinson. So say we were Bible Temple on Fillmore Street, cast out every devil in him. Mm-hmm. If you thought it was just in him, it was in his sister too. Wow. I seen smoke coming out of her mouth. Wow. I said, she had the ministry of deliverance. She said, y'all playing with too many spirits in this family. So something I seen, I was about 14 years old. 14 years old, I never forgot that. And I mean, she she had her neck like this, and she said, that's how you can see what you see. She said, some of y'all don't believe in this. If you're, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, I suggest you leave. She told Amen. us, get out. Yes. If you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost, get out. Amen. She said, some spirits going to jump out of one body into the next. Mm-hmm. And both of people are now dead. Mm-hmm. Playing with spirits. Mm-hmm. God give you a chance. Mm-hmm. That's how you handle it. The Bible speaks about God's grace is sufficient yes. for all of us. That means the thorn that's in your side, he, he's never going to take it out. That's to remind you of where you come from. So he covers us what with his grace. The Old Testament, they walked up under mercy. The Spirit of God would cover over them and they would write them under the anointing. Now we're up under grace. Yeah. But that don't mean you mishandle the grace. Yeah. I've heard people say, oh, God has already forgiven me. After you done did it, you plotted to do that yourself. But God had already forgiven me. Huh? I said, okay. I, just, I walked away from this. I didn't even say anything. Amen. And they knew I made faces. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at that brother. I said, see, you playing. You playing with that. And got caught. Sometimes we set our soul up. And it ain't got nothing to do with God. God will whisper to you, like I told you before, about the lady at the bus stop. Randy, don't get in that car. Father. He said, don't get in the car. She was persistent. And he told me three times, don't get in the car. And I never did. That woman had full blown AIDS. Oh, my goodness. They can bite you and get in your blood cells mm-hmm. and you can get it. He said, that's why I told you not to get in that car. Mm-hmm. She went from me to a musician and he told her, I don't want you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we act like a fool. Mm-hmm. 
We got spiritual good senses. I always tell them up here, I ain't the only one that senses and see stuff. I know this one right here, I always see stuff like that. We was looking at the same time. I right, listen to us about y'all this morning, but it's the truth. Amen. God, my mama said she never raised no fools, no dummies. Amen. All of y'all got good common sense. And the same thing for God did with his children. You can be gifted, but don't be foolish. Amen. Don't mishandle that gift, and don't mishandle the God that you serve. Amen. God, he'll just speak to you very soundly. Certain people you meet in this life, God, I tell you, I don't want you dealing with them. People reject you, that's God protecting you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. People keep rejecting you, that's God protecting you. He protecting you from a fool. So you won't do foolish things like they're doing. Amen. Amen? Right. Amen. So be dealing with the fate of a fool, but make sure you're not walking like that fool. That's how David felt like a fool because he made all those mistakes while he was yet reigning as a king. The higher you go in God, the higher the attacks. Amen. And you'll, you'll be surprised Amen. who it come from. Amen. People will set you up, not just in the world, but even in the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. You ask me to come over for dinner all the time? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm fasting. Have a good day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nope. Come get in the car. Nope. <laughs> Don't be foolish. Everybody don't have good motives, a pure, a pure heart. Amen. Some people got sin and iniquity in their heart so they can destroy you. Amen. Amen. So let us be encouraged on today. I pray that you was blessed by the word. And I pray that you take this word and apply it to your life daily. Amen. Now get up here, it's not a, uh, to be a clown or fool around. It's still right to have a sense of humor. Amen. Because God wants us to be spiritually balanced. Don't let nobody trick you and, and pull you away from the God that you're trying to serve. But there's Jesus, there's also a Judas. Amen. Amen. But there's David, there's also an Absalom yeah. who wanted his father's glory, didn't he? Amen. And he got killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. There's always somebody who's going to be stronger than you that's going to come and try to trick you like a fool and treat you like a fool. But the God that you serve is not foolish. He's pure and holy. And he expects us to be just like him. Not junior gods, but sons and daughters Amen. of the kingdom of God. Like a royal priesthood and a holy nation. He expects us to be just like him and made in his image. Yeah. Don't let people trick you. People are always giving you stuff. You better watch that. Mm -hmm. Day after Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. People are always calling you two or three times after the day. Day after Sunday. You have to watch people. Amen? Amen. Take that with, not with a grain of salt, but take it with wisdom. Amen. The older you get, the more you're going to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Co-workers, being over nice to you, you kind of watch that. That's mm -hmm. too bit nice. No. Amen. 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 So we encourage you today. We'll close out with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the word of God that the word will be applied to everyone's heart, even in this room. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. And that even on this week, Lord God, we speak victory over every situation, circumstance, Lord God, help discernment to be in the room in the midst of us. Help us to discern the things of God and the things of the enemy. And Lord God, keep your hand of protection upon each and every soul in this room. Yes. And God, we honor you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Ha <laughs> ha!